Tasman family are left reeling after losing everything, including a beloved family pet dog, in a house fire that broke out late Monday morning in their rental property of nearly 20 years. The Platt family, father Steve and his two children, Karen and Melissa, were uninsured and now have to face starting from scratch. The fire caused thick black smoke which could be seen billowing into the sky from Kina, according to one eyewitness. Four fire appliances attended the scene along with seven tankers which worked in a relay to bring water to the house, getting the water from a nearby dam. While the many volunteer firefighters tried to contain the house fire from spreading, rural firefighters doused a stand of nearby conifer trees that had caught a light. The intensity of the fire was so great that multiple crews from Mapua Motueka and Upper Mutri had to use breathing apparatus as they encircled the house to fight the fire although the house was in a state of collapse when they first arrived at the scene. Fire crews had the fire contained by 12.30pm, with some left to clean up and dampen down the scene well into the afternoon. It is a second house fire in a short period of time that the Motueka and neighbouring volunteer crews have attended in the area, after another house fire that took place in the Little Sydney Valley last Monday week. It is understood that a temporary house has been offered to the devastated Platt family until March next year, but they are now left trying to find the essentials with which to furnish it. Mainland understands that a Give a Little page titled Help for Steve has now been set up to help the family. You can find a link for this Give a Little fundraiser on our Facebook page. Last weekend's Burt Munro Challenge in Invercargill has been marred for motorbike riders again in another year where Motueka man Craig Allen Chambers, aged 39, was killed on his return home from the event. Chambers died when a rental vehicle driven by a foreign national overtook into oncoming traffic on State Highway 1 in North Otago about 5pm on Sunday. Police have blamed the driver's inattention for the deadly four-vehicle crash in North Otago. Specialist staff were at the scene on Monday and a serious crash investigation into the cause of the incident is ongoing. This multi-vehicle crash has again reignited debate around both tourist drivers and the safety of New Zealand roads. In 2012, Grant Roberts of Timaru and a Tauranga man, Dennis Peterson, were killed on the Lindis Pass as they rode home in a convoy after the Burt Munro event that year. The group was travelling back over the pass when a 20-year-old Chinese student overcorrected her car after encountering gravel, causing it to cross to the other side of the road. MP for Tasman, Damien O'Connor, who travels our South Island roads covering the largest electorate in the country, spoke to Chrissy Small about this latest accident. The tragic accident after the Burt Monroe event down in Otago, and we've, we, we've seen a, a Motueka man killed in a... A uh, terrible road accident actually caused by another a foreign national. Um, is this indicative of our types of roads that we have down here? I mean this seems to happen every year. We're finding that people leaving this event are being killed. Well it's a terrible tragedy and my heart goes out to the family in Motueka who have uh, lost a family member. Um, I drive that road quite often and what you have is uh, two lanes going one way, one going the other way and then it, it reverses um, you know, five or six kilometres down the road and what this is, is, is a cheap way of providing uh, passing lanes um, from one side to the other and this does lead to or can lead to confusion and I know what it's like as a local driver, someone who spends a lot of time on the road, I can just imagine how confusing that would be for a foreign driver who's come uh, into the country just a day or so earlier and confronts this and obviously inattention or a whole lot of other factors but road design in New Zealand obviously does contribute uh, in, in some part, in large part I believe, uh, to a lot of the road accidents along with a very pathetic um, system of driver education notification for foreigners who come in and uh, I think we're going to have to up our game and just provide a bit more advice um, you know, for foreigners who come in to protect them and to protect us from them. That's right and particularly the South Island the roads aren't actually in, in many areas are not that great a quality. 
Well, I think we, you know, for the amount of traffic we have on them, they're, they're okay, but they do require a higher skill level, and you have to be more attentive. Our signage systems are not what they should be. Um, there's a, a lot of uh, local thinking goes into signage. Oh, we know where, you know, you should go or how you should drive. We've got to realise that people who come from the other side of the world need good guidance as well, and I think that's where we're, we're failing. And uh, the national government, again, has cut back funding for rural roading they put all their money into the big city projects and so it's hard for um, you know the engineers and other people to do the job they should do uh, in the regions. So um, one other thing though Damien is that, that our roads the widths of our roads are very narrow I mean uh, most people from overseas are used to big wide <laughs> highways and they they strike our highways and they think they're on a country lane um, <laughs> Should we actually look at the kinds of roads that we're building in this country? Uh, look, I think, you know, road design is crucial. Um, you know, it costs a lot of money, of, co of course, and, uh, you know, for every extra one metre of width, um, then there's a huge cost involved. And if you've got a government that's, you know, intent on driving down the cost of everything, then it's unlikely we're going to see an improvement in the quality of roads under the national government. And, and when we get back in, uh, we did put a huge amount of additional funding into regional uh, funding projects and we'll continue to do that to improve road safety. Mm. Well Damien O'Connor it's been a pleasure chatting with you today and thank you very much for your time. Thank you Chrissy. it's always a pleasure. Police have now named the cyclist who died following a collision with a light van on Tahunanui Drive around 8.50am on Saturday. He was William otherwise known as Bill Frederick Higgins aged 76 from Tahunanui. Jetstar is Nelson's newest airline taking off with its inaugural flight JQ371 landing in Nelson Tuesday this week. And already this is causing quite a stir with the opposition. Air New Zealand have been quick to respond on their Facebook page Tuesday morning to Jetstar's new Nelson service with an extended nose image of a Jetstar aircraft with the comments, when is it fashion fashionable to be late? Hardly ever and not when you're travelling leaving many to leave negative comments on their page like it's pot calling the kettle black and others commenting that Air New Zealand's record for timekeeping is also questionable. Launching their new route from Nelson, Jetstar promise of all day everyday low fares seems to be a dream come true for Nelson travellers with $9 one way fares on offer for a limited time. Regular one way lead in fares between Nelson and Wellington are $45 and between Nelson and Auckland are just $49 making a considerable saving from Air New Zealand's cheapest standard grabber seat fare of 69 to Wellington. Jetstar now takes a total number of airlines flying in and out of Nelson to six. A health warning has been issued since four people have been found to have contracted Hepatitis A with imported frozen berries as the main suspected cause. The Ministry for Primary Industries has said there was a potential risk of hepatitis being associated with eating the imported berries. However, MPI Director of Plants, Food and Environment Peter Thompson has said investigations had not yet revealed a specific cause. However, recent outbreaks in other countries also suggest this link. Chrissy Small spoke to MPI Opposition and Tasman's Opposition Spokesman and MP for Tasman Damien O'Connor about this latest scare. A, a situation's arisen about uh, Hepatitis A possibly being the, caused by foreign um, imports of frozen berries. What can what can be done about that? Well, uh, you know, I have to declare a possible conflict of interest. I do grow some boysenberries, a small number myself. Um, but look, this this was uh, inevitable. We we had the very high standards of food production uh, in New Zealand, and we expect that they would that would be the case around the world. Now, that's simply not the case. And so we're importing a lot of food and increasing amount of it is coming in without proper scrutiny. And uh, this is just one example of where we believe country of origin labelling should first and foremost be uh, assist consumers to work out where the food uh, purchasing comes from. And then it's up to you know the importers or MPI as the overseeing agency to ensure that that food is safe. Uh, what's even worse here is that um, across in Australia, nine months ago, they identified this potential risk, and yet nothing seems to have happened here in New Zealand. And once again, it comes back to MPI, uh, a big agency, not doing its job properly. 
Okay, and of course uh, that's all about resources. But um, Damien, under the TPP, country of origin labelling won't be allowed, will it? Uh, no, I, um, you can get country of origin labelling. Um, you know, Australia does. We've got Australasian food safety standards here, so we can do it as well. Um, it, it's simply allowing consumer choice, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We have ingredients that come from a wide range of countries on some occasions where we spices. That does make it a bit tricky, but it doesn't mean that you can't have it. Uh, and, and here, if people knew they were eating berries from offshore, then they might opt to buy the local ones instead um, that they have more faith in. Well, some berry uh, growers here, uh, sadly, do import berries as well, so that's that's that can be a little bit tricky. But, um, Damien, under the TPP, I believe that, um, as I understand it, um, origin uh, country of origin labelling can provide a disadvantage in trade, which means that it could then become an investor's dispute um, process. Look, there's still some debates. I haven't read all the 6,000 pages, um, but my understanding is it still can be implemented um, as it should be. I'm sure that the growers in America and the UK, um, you know, elsewhere around the world, even those members of the TPPA, will not want to remove the ability for them to say this is locally produced food. Mm, okay. Since this outbreak, the Ministry of Primary Industries has now instituted a surveillance program including additional testing focused on imported frozen berries. Good news for Network Tasman customers as the line provider will be giving its customers a total of 3.5 million collective discount in the December issued power bills. 38,500 power company customers will receive a discounted rate of 0.81 cents on each unit of electricity consumed during the last year. This discount is level with last year's December discount, where an average user can see a discount of around $56 against their power bill. The company also issued a 2.6% reduction in its line charges back in April this year. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Welcome to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter. Give us a call on 546 4084 and we'll be happy to spoil ya. Hi everyone, I'm Malcolm Harris from The Facilitators. We now look after sales for mainland TV, radio, sky and online. New Zealand On Air's latest Colmar Brunton survey confirms mainland's large multimedia audience. If you're in business or want to put a message out to everyone in the Nelson, Tasman region, plus nationwide on sky or worldwide online, please give me a call or see our website at www.mainlandtv.nz. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum.
A reminder that Nelson Santa Parade and Carnival is on this Sunday the 6th of December, or if cancelled, the parade will be held on Sunday the 13th of December. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30pm through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. Join in for cards, games and a cuppa. For more information, please contact Jan. St Stephen's and Tahunanui are having some Christmas events. Kids and Carols on Sunday the 6th at 6.30pm, a drop-in cafe for lunch on Friday the 11th at 11am, and Carols by the Beach on Saturday the 12th at 4pm until 7.30pm. Stay tuned for more next week. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Welcome me hearties to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe. Famous for hearty meals, craft owls and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too. Or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time. Relax and enjoy our award winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 5464-08. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000 but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery we have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. Nelson Tire Centre, great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer, all types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. Jong talenten en kansen. Zie op FC het opera area zingen. Ze heet Hollands Pro Talent gewonnen. Ze heeft een heel wat dans. Amira!
Graham from Classic Gates Engineering. We specialise in all sorts of engineering, classic gates, balustrades, pool fences, do structural engineering, house, house lots of structural steel work, swimming pool fences, we also do firebox repairs, garden furniture, archways etc. So for powder coating, sandblasting, all sorts of paintwork, call in to see us, 6 Nelson Street, Blenheim, Classic Gates Engineering. From Cresswell's on Market Street, we fitted footwear for all seasons, all reasons. For summer times in the sounds, for solid support on the sidelines, for social events around town, for good times around the grapevines. That's why at Cresswell's we believe in fitting footwear correctly so you get the best out of quality shoes and sandals and can then get the best out of life. Cresswell Special Service, it's unique. Helping keep Marlborough on its feet for over 60 years. Nestled in the garden city of Christchurch is one of New Zealand's most beautiful and famous holiday parks, where we join the wildlife with a warm welcome to all visitors. The canopy of trees and gardens provide a tranquil setting amongst all the amenities, playgrounds, swimming and spa pools, and entertainment on a grand scale. This wonderful park offers the weary traveller a haven of quality. Low-cost cabins, motels, tourist flats, Caravan, campervan and campsites. Meadow Park, located on Cranford Street near the main North Road, Christchurch. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Welcome, me hearties, to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe. Famous for hearty meals, craft owls, and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too. Or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time. Relax and enjoy our award-winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 5464084. Oh, this is a beautiful four bedroom, three bathroom home. It's large internal access double garage. It fits two cars nicely with a little workshop bench at the end of it. In this room we have two large lazy boys, a three seater and a two seater leather lounge suite, 50 inch Samsung TV and a heat pump. Features are a cathedral ceiling and of course that beautiful view. For relatively little cost, you too can sell your house. Do it yourself. You're the best person to promote and sell your own house. Your personal endorsement is the best selling proposition. Put yourself on screen and sell it. You know the attractions of your house, you know it better than anybody else. So, get up there and tell us all about it. Sell it. Oh, upstairs we have three bedrooms. Uh, one of these has a full ensuite, that's the master bedroom, with large bifold doors. Now at these bifold doors you get to a wraparound uh, deck area that faces northwest. And this is lovely in the morning for sitting and having your coffee. Hawk Films is now producing for you an advertising package and a broadcasting service at a price far lower than you would expect. We will produce your advertising video and feature it across TV, radio and electronic media. Your message will be up to three minutes long and it'll be broadcast five times a day on radio and TV. Five times a day. And it will be listed online all day, every day, for exposure to your potential buyers. You can also use the ad and the photos to promote your house on radio, TV, TradeMe and other real estate sites. 
We can also offer drone aerial shots for a totally different viewpoint from the one you would normally see. Selling your house is up to you and your solicitor. We're here to merely add value to your advertising strategy. Give me a call and let's get your property on the market. Or better still, email or text me and I'll call you back.